Thank you so much for staying tuned to this channel. Welcome to another edition of International Forum. I am Wilson Omasha. Today, it is all about the G20 summit with the palpable absence of two strong men. The president of China, Xi Jinping, and of course, the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. And Joe Biden said he's so disappointed that Xi Jinping will not be coming. Rather, he sent a representative. The question now is, what led to all these arrangements? What do you think is the implication? What do you think is the message these two great presidents are trying to send to the world? With me here in the studio to talk about this after stuff from my far left. It's like we have a full house today. I, I like to call him a comrade. I like to call him a veteran. Jeremy, to welcome Orube. Welcome to international forum i appreciate your comment thank you very much all right so very close to him he's a legal practitioner barrister heron wazo welcome i appreciate your coming good afternoon listeners at home don't forget of mention also a very vibrant youth uh, at chinaka china or kong hope i got that name correctly kilichi kilichi thank you so much for coming thank you thank you for having me and i have another seasoned analyst brian moore uh ibrahim, ibrahim momo thank you so so much for honoring my request i appreciate your coming thank you for having me Good Good afternoon, right. Nigerians. so let's just tee up for this question i'm going to start from you at my extreme left g20 without two key leaders is this the g20 or there's something else they wouldn't want to name the summit over to you <laughs> well g20 without two leaders will be called G80. However, that is not it. Uh, <clears throat> what is playing out there is a normal uh, political issues that we usually play out at international forums such as that. Uh, pundits and analysts have said that what has happened or what is going to happen, because the, the meeting actually starts this weekend, what is going to happen is that they are going to miss two key uh, superpowers, China and Russia. Now the message to the world there uh, will be many. First, if China, uh, represent, uh, the president is uh, Xi Jinping, if he's going to be absent at that summit, what does it show? First, to India, because of the political tension that had happened over time, uh, the, the relationship between China and India that is hosting has not been very smooth. And if Xi Jinping is going to be absent from there, the message will be China, watch it, uh, Russia, watch it, India, watch it. Now, he's not, he's not going to be present. The reasons have not been given. But analysts have said, that the economic situation in China is enough for the president to step back to concentrate on national issues instead of international issues such as the G20. But the argument here again is if he could attend the last summit of the BRICS in South Africa, why not now? Now that is left for people to begin to analyze and begin to conjecture and begin to guess. For uh, Russia, we know that at least he has a point there. If Putin is shying away from attending the summit, we will understand because the ICC issue is still hanging around his neck. We'll get there. Okay. okay, that the ICC issue of Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. Now, Barista, you heard me give a perfect foundation for this discussion, talking about the reason why President, like you know, elucidating why these two great personalities, like you know, absent in the G20 summit from the factors he raised. Do you have anything to add to it or share his views? Well, uh, I quite appreciate the position of my brother here, but the question there still remains that the two presidents are not coming has not vitiated the fact that their countries are not represented because china will be represented uh, uh russia russia will probably be represented mm -hmm. and i believe that those who are going to represent these nations are already carries the message of their president to this nation mm -hmm. accepted that 
uh, put in because of the pressure from the ICC over the invasion, not actually the invasion of Ukraine as it were, but the alleged threat to deport Ukrainians to uh, children to uh, Russia, because that is the major issue that brought about the ICC. Not only that he invaded Ukraine, as it were, but that is the primary angle at which they hit on it. But for the fact that their countries are going to be represented, I see it from the angle that it does not change anything automatically, as it were. Accepted that uh, China has border issue with, uh, new, uh, with uh, India, India, as it were. But that is not enough for us to conclude that they are coming. For the fact they are going to be represented, it's enough for us to do the message they want to carry down to them. But again, you also be looking at it from the angle. Is it because of that the West is failing and the East is rising? That can be another issue. Mm -hmm. But it's a different thing entirely. Even if the West is failing because of the dominance, because they all have that fear of uh, America trying to dominate mm -hmm. as it were. But again, the question then is, politics, as it were, borders on issue of interest. You want to have those who want to be your allies. You want to have those who will always support your cause, whether it is genuine or not, but right. because of the interest you have. Whether it's genuine or not. Now, for what is it? Whether uh, Xi Jinping is present or Putin is absent, it doesn't really matter because they have representatives that will carry the message of China and Russia to the G20 summit. What do they say about that, Kilichi? Well, what we are seeing there is a clear manifestation of struggle for power, dominance, mm. and in the international political system, uh, power is very important because it determines who gets what, when, and how. So uh, their presence is quite symbolic. We cannot shove it aside. It shows that there are issues in the international political system. This, uh, Russia and China being major actors their, their absence speaks volume in the international political system, and it, and it shows that international security, uh, as it is now, is, is hanging on the balance. Whenever they come, when, when there is a full house between these international actors in a summit like G20, it shows there is progress, it shows there is uh, uh, um, proper, um, proper uh, governance of international political system. But their absence speaks for whether they have representatives or not, it doesn't actually matter. So um, we can also uh, uh, take cognizance that few months or last week, we had the BRICS uh, summit in South Africa, and Russia uh, was present virtually because of the issues of ICC, but uh, Chinese leader was also present. So for them not to come to the G20 uh, summit, it speaks volume, and it's not something we can actually push aside. In okay, the okay. It's not something we can actually push outside. Now, this is the first time you get to see a U.S. president attending a meeting for a very long time without other superpowers being present in that meeting. Some point I say that this is a slap on the face of the United States of America. For Biden to be there saying he was hoping that Xi Jinping would be around for them to have this robust discussion. You are sending a representative. Ibrahim, take it off from there. Well, thank you very much. Um, the first point to make is that uh, the G20 is an economic union. That group of 20 countries plus the European Union accounts for about 90% of global GDP. Any decision that is collectively taken at the G20 summit is as good as, it's even stronger than the United Nations resolution economically. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because there is a power of enforcement you know, uh, when, when they agree. Secondly, the population of the members of the G20 is about 65% of global population. A clear majority of people gathering, the leaders of countries. You know, the largest country in the world today is, China, is India. Mm -hmm. Second largest country now is China. It's China you yeah. know. So you are seeing that, um, mm. and of course the U.S. is ranking around, around, very much around there. So when you see a, 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 an economic union meeting, and then two of the most powerful countries in the world are not represented it's a big, by their, at, the, at the highest level. Mm. Of course, we are hearing that Sergei Lavrov, the, the Russian foreign minister, will be there. Yeah. We're also hearing that uh, Lee. Li Chuen, the, the Prime Minister of um, China, China, will be there too. But these are, <coughs> men, um, if you may, 
appendages, plenipotentiaries. There are people who can't take decisions on behalf of their states. They have to again report back, you know, to their leader. So mm. the fact that uh, Xi Jinping of China and um, Russia's Vladimir Putin are not there speaks to the fact that there's an attempt to downplay the importance uh, first of the G20. And then you see also that it is not, it is not just a mere attempt to downplay. There are core issues, core strategic issues of international importance mm -hmm. that are, you know, affecting China, particularly in the South Asia, Southeast Asian uh, region, mm -hmm. the South China Sea. You know, there have been disputes on the, particularly with, within Russia, so within China and India on border. And then the South, the South China Sea is a highly contested water. Mm -hmm. You know, on, um, um, you are seeing South Korea, Japan, India, China, and the Philippines. Philippines, every other yeah. country. And because because um, Russia and China is the most powerful country there, militarily and economically. Don't forget that China is the second largest economy in the world. And of course, the of military, it has the largest infantry, foot soldiers in the world. You know, when you, you, you not gather for a, a, an economic union, in, a country that is you are highly contesting with, uh, in this case India, you 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 want to assume that India will have an advantage because it is the host country. Yes, <laughs> they will have an advantage. So All right. In, 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 in <laughs> not to stop this, uh, you know, yeah. this um, you know seeming advantage. Advantage. Uh, you know. the then, to pull out. Yes, and then of course, without we, we already know the issues around uh, Russia and Ukraine with, uh, with regard to Ukraine, and I've seen the visuals. I'm always okay. been pointing out that. Uh, <laughs> All right. There is uh, uh, Vladimir Zelensky in the picture. Yeah, we will we'll come back to you on that. Some are saying that for these two leaders to send representatives to G20 summit, it means that all is not well in the world or with the world. How do you feel about that comment? Um, there's a scholar called uh, Alfred Wu of uh, the Li Kuan Yu University. Who has said that whether they are there or not, it is a question of what time permits. That there has never been any time in the in the history of the organization where they had had a hundred percent representation of all leaders. That from time to time representatives are sent in. But that this one is gathering momentum. Is because of the the, impo the 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 role that these two nations, China and Russia, play in world politics. We know that China and uh, Russia are one of the greatest superpowers of the world, and so if they are not there, chances are that something is wrong. And to India, for example, they they even feel it is uh, a good omen. Because they said one man's loss is another man's gain. Okay. Uh, he, here they are. This is the time to shine. Whereas if we had China and Russia being present, they would have been the ones setting the agenda. But India as a host country can now set agenda and even push it. Now don't forget again that the dominance of USA America, over this uh, group, have been on for so long. And so, if they are pushing, if they are pushing, they are trying to now say, let this uh, G20 not be too large an umbrella for all of them. That time has come where they will even promote the BRICS so that whereas America will be uh, conversing its dominance over G20 and the G7, so, the others <coughs> cannot see the BRICS and others as equal, I don't want to say rival, mm. equal unions with the uh, G7. So if we are saying that it matters, we are looking at what could possibly be the interpretation. This is because China still holds a great uh, how do I put it down? Uh, influence 
over what happens in the G20. All right. Now, from what he rightly said, he said, from what he can perceive, uh, as like things, uh, is not that right with the world because of the absence of these two great leaders. But they were present at the BRICS summit. He talked about that. Does it not mean that they are trying to project BRICS in lieu of the G20 for Putin to be present, despite the warning and all that he still went? Xi Jinping also was present at all that place that he came together to have a robust meeting when the BRICS came together. And right now, these two, they are absent. Does it mean that priority have shifted? Uh, it's not as if priority has actually shifted. But just as I rightly said, that they are not present has not vitiated the fact that the message, they are, they are, the people who they have sent, to represent their country will not be carried out. Message coming from who? <laughs> no, you see, the truth of the matter. When the presidents are not there. Who, who are those sent? Listen, the yes. man who is, is just like you, are, you work in an office. Yes. Somebody directs on what to do. If mm. I am to represent, uh, for example, I, I, I'm a member of the bar. My chairman is sending me on a message to represent me on an occasion. Mm. I am carrying the message of my chairman. I'm not mm. carrying my personal message. It's the same thing we are talking about. Those who are representing, they are representing the interests of their nation. They are not going there individually on their own capacity. They are going there in the capacity that they are representing their country. And the message of their leader is that this is our position when it comes to international politics. This is the message you have to give, that this is our own position. Issues that will be raised, and such issues that will be raised, it now left for them to address the issue. And mind it also that it is not as if they are going there just to sit down and watch. Mm. They have issues. That uh, Putin is not going uh, to India is because he has already had an interaction with the uh, president. They discussed on phone. Mm. And he gave reasons for why he will not be coming. Accepted, they looked. Then in the case of China, the, uh, the, 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 the prime minister cannot be at the same time with the president, they cannot be traveling. Though they raise the issue of uh, you know, having others schedule that, you know, keeping him out of it. But that, again, you look at the quarrel they have, mm -hmm. borders on the issue of the border. It is an issue. Okay. And, and that, again, you know, you know he, he tends to snub Delhi, you know, to show their disapproval mm -hmm. of, you know, of the issue they had, of border on the issue of the border. That can be an issue. But that does not remove the fact that their interests will not be protected by those who are going there. All right. Now, some of the opinion that there is truly a border dispute between India and China, that would have been a viable tool, a template, the G20 summit, to resolve such issue. They are saying that they don't want to come because he is in solidarity with Vladimir Putin. After all, they are like five and six right now in global politics. Kalechi, what do they say about that? Well, um, there's a compelling need to understand that international policies yes. is governed by interest. Yes. And we have Russia and China who are great allies. And when it comes to the G20 summit, which we hosted by India, you understand that China has serious issues with India. And India, on the other hand, is, uh, China, on the other hand, is also supporting Pakistan who has issues with uh, um, India. Uh, India in the Kashmir region. Region, yeah. But with regards to uh, the BRICS question, I think the BRICS, uh, China and Russia are moving closer to the BRICS rather than the G20 because they see it as a, as a credible alternative to the, what, to the G20 uh, summit or to the G20 forum. So you, know, you, you can see that many nations are interested in joining the BRICS. So the BRICS are what they are providing alternative uh, um, economic forum for what developing and developed countries. Mm -hmm. So they want a forum where they will have greater input uh, uh, in their affairs, governing uh, the economic uh, uh, well-being and security. So and the BRICS provides that kind of forum. Okay, the BRICS provide that kind of forum. What I'm making that point is like you have a contrary view. We talk about the reason why these two leaders choose to like uh, not wanting to come. For what Boyster once or talked about, he said, "Look, is the 
a border dispute between China and, and of course, India, that is one of the reasons why they refuse to come. But some are saying that would have been an avenue for them to sort it out. Some are saying that is actually out of the equation because they are showing solidarity. That is the reason why both of them refuse, you know, to come around. Anyway, you're going to throw more light on that after we return from <laughs> this break. Don't go away. This is International Forum. Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is the International Forum, and we are taking a look at the G20 summit with palpable absence of uh, Xing Jinping and Vladimir Putin. We were with you talk about the reason behind the reason why these two gentlemen choose to abscond, or well, let's say, absent themselves from the meeting. We've spoken at length on this particular issue. Now, let's dive down into what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. Of course, the red alert plays on Putin if he leaves for any part of the world. He went to South Africa. Nothing happened to him. Uh, sorry, I mean, it's like, you know, now, now let's take a look at India right now. He chose not to go to India. So much soon it's because the man is scared of being embarrassed. That's the reason why he doesn't want to come, because he's on the wanted list as a president. What do you feel about that? Well, the first thing is that uh, India is not a signatory to the ICC convention, mm -hmm. International Criminal Court. So there's no chance that, just like South Africa is a member, is a signatory, but India is not a signatory. The US is not a signatory. Russia mm -hmm. is not a signatory. You know, but South Africa is. So there's no chance that he's going to be arrested in India. That's the first thing. Secondly is that, um, uh, I can also point out correctly, there, are, there is that very stiff border challenge mm. between India and Russia. And it is, it, it, it's only um, when we don't see, when two powerful countries fight, it is a real fight. Mm. And apparently, because of the level of uh, defense technology and uh, that military strength and uh, economic strength too, China seems to be having an edge over India. Mm. Now, if you want to use India, who is a part of the conflict as a base, as a, the ground for resolving that conflict. There's going to be a tilting of the balance. And I'm sure China has no interest in usurping you know, at the apple cart. The third point to make is that, um, um, I think it was Kelechi that mentioned the point that, you know, when you look at India, its rival, nuclear rival, is not actually China, it is Pakistan. Mm. In fact, they, they, they launched their nuclear technology, nuclear power technology, within a week of each other, a several, about two decades ago. So, and in, between India and uh, Pakistan, there is this indo administered Kashmir, and there is the pakistan administered Kashmir. The Kashmir as a country is rather into two halves. two, yes. Because of the backing of these two countries. Apart from the fact that there are two nuclear powers. So, there is so much at stake, and China seems to be backing Pakistan against India. And then, of course, when you look at the fact that, you know, the South China Sea, there is that dispute, and the two major powers there are India and China, but China seems to again have claimed, really, you know, there are so many issues. So when you see these this, uh, leaders not there, they are not there on a very reasoned, and nobody should play down, really, on a very serious note. Nobody should play down the fact that it, a, a summit that Joe Biden is attending, you see Xi Jinping of China, it's called like the in the world, it's not attending. And then the largest, uh, 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 the largest country by landmass, um, Russia, Russia, is not also attending, the president is not attending. Whatever Lavrov is doing, the only Li Chuan is doing, are just men going to report to their masters, to their, to their presidents, so to their mm -hmm. leaders. They have no power to act, to take decisions on behalf of China, and of, and of Russia. So the fact that the US president, US economy is 26, 20, more than 25%, 26% of total global GDP. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, 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 military technology, the US is very, very, uh, is very, very high up there, you know, uh, in the same uh, level with China, and if you may, Russia. So that, that, that the American president is going to be in the summit, and Chinese and Russian presidents are not, president not going to be there. It's a big deal. It, it tends to give vent to the fact that people are saying they have the one to promote where they are in charge, BRICS. Mm. Mm. You know, BRICS is now, initially it was five countries, Brazil, Russia, yeah. India, mm. China, and South Africa. Now it is now 11. You now have countries like Indonesia, like Argentina, like uh, Ethiopia, uh, like Egypt, mm. uh, you know, joining the, the fray. So 
And if you look at that economic union, the, the, the G20 is an economic union of 20 most powerful countries, 20 most economically developed countries in the world. Mm. As at that time, it was formed. All right. Today, you are seeing that the, the BRICS they are coming up and they are catching is, up. Is, is, is challenging yeah. the G20, G20. economically. All right, I'll come back to you, Mama. Now, let me come back to you, sir. If you take a look at the issues, like as we we're talking about, the speech of uh, Zelensky said, we'll say, talk about Ukraine crisis, talk about Ukraine crisis. Do you think it's going to make any difference if Biden or anyone choose to table what is happening between Russia and Ukraine in this G20, knowing fully that the parties that are directly involved are not present? Well, uh, that is like uh, shaving one's hair when one is not present that Russia is so present in itself takes away that agenda from their summit. Mm. However, because it is a global summit, issues of international collaboration are to be tabled. Mm. So it is left for Savog, uh, Savog, the uh, Russian foreign affairs minister who is representing Russia to adequately project and protect his uh, country there. Mm. Now, Russia versus Ukraine war is, has become a world affair. Mm. So the U.S. government, although it's, they are looking, Joe Biden is looking, is looking at why would uh, Putin not be uh, available now? They know that the next summit or the next major meeting that they, they are going to see one on one will be in November in. Uh, is it bonus eyes or uh, no, the, the, even the UNG is coming up? Yes, it's, it's, it's coming, coming up yes. in um, November, mm -hmm. and uh, messages have been sent that at that meeting uh, Russia will be there. So I think because Russia will not be present now, it may not be proper to adequately discuss issues regarding Ukraine war. Um, don't forget too that China that seem to have uh, supported Russia, seems, uh, was the term I've used, to have supported Russia, will not also be at the, at the summit. And so they are looking at it. Is it not an ally? Is it not an agreement between these two persons to deliberately snub this summit so that issues that were wrought arising from Russia Ukraine war will not be adequately tackled? This is because the war between Russia and Ukraine cannot be seen to be near over for now because these world leaders have not come to agree. They are not on table terms. They are, they are not discussing those issues. They are at bay. Everybody is running away and everybody is looking at each other. What do we do? What next step are we going to take? So the world leaders championed by the G20 now where U.S. is dominating may have to resolve issues and comments on Russia Ukraine war to the next summit that will happen in November. Do you feel the same? Well, it depends on the person who is going to spread the card on the table. Mm. Because <clears throat> if it's part of the arrangement they have, automatically the issue will be raised. Mm. Whether Russia is attending or not has nothing to do with it. That is Putin coming personally to attend it has nothing to do with it. But again, the question still remains. Since February 24, 2022, the war started in Ukraine. Mm. If there is anything tangible that all these nations would have been able to do, they would have long done it, considering the number of months that the war has dragged up. Mm. And uh, the Ukrainians have remained you know, uh, resolute that they will not give in, notwithstanding the high level of bombardment and uh, you know, threats coming from Russia. So to me personally, the issue will be raised, as it were, but the parties will never come to a, an agreement because of the different interests that borders on it. Bear in mind again that you are looking at international politics and everything borders on interest. You are looking at an area where you have a comparative advantage from the other, and you now want to maximize it. The issue of that uh, uh, China uh, president will not be coming, so also that of uh, Putin will not be coming to the G20. For others looking at it from the angle because of the existence of BRICS, might be a, a different thing entirely. Mm -hmm. Well and accepted, but again, the question is, 
it is for their own personal interest. And that is the angle like which I look at it for. Personal interest. Yes. Personal interest. Yes. Now, I, I'm still on the Russian-Ukraine war. Vladimir Zelensky has been talking so, so tough about what Russia has been doing to Ukraine, appealing for more sanctions, for more help and all that. Do you think what is happening right now with the absence of these two great personalities, do you think that the Ukraine-Russia situation will dominate the discussion or something else might just take it off? Kelechi. Obviously, this, um, uh, this war remains on the front burner of international politics mm. because what affects Ukraine affects um, a major part of the world. For example, uh, one of the themes of this G20 summit is what? The energy security, mm. uh, uh, climate, and uh, the, the issues of uncertainties that, that, uh, that came out of the issues of the Ukraine war. So we have the problem of food security, green security in Europe, mm. and the issues of energy. And that is why uh, the Western countries are trying to seek alternative from energy, because Russia is a great supplier of energy to Europe, and America through uh, Russian gas, uh, uranium, and even the, the even another major supplier of uh, energy to Europe and uh, America is Kazakhstan. And this energy passes through Russia. That is why these Western countries are moving fast to Africa. That is why they are moving quick to see that the Trans-Saharan gas pipeline will be up and going, so that uh, Russia um, uh, advantage with gas or their gas policies. Uh, would, would diminish would it down. Mm. So that is why they are moving towards Africa greatly. And that is why you are seeing even this conflict in Africa we co may continue uh, to worsen in the long run because these powers fear greatly that, look, Russia have, is having a stronghold in their former, uh, mm. a, in areas which they consider as their sphere of influence. So the Ukrainian war remains a serious issue in world politics. If we look at the agenda of the G20, we are also looking at what uh, reshaping uh, the debt policy in the world. We are also looking at the issues of cryptocurrencies. We have issues of Russian hackers, uh, Chinese hackers, disturbing uh, and distorting world financial uh, institutions. Yes. So this, this issue has a reverberating effect. Mm. So Russia-Ukraine war remains an important issue, and, and, and that is why world powers are trying all their possible best to see that uh, um, the issue can be what brought to a amicable end. All right. Over now to you, uh, Momo. He said, look, security, food security, world stability most surely dominate, but we are having two key persons that may have direct impact in these issues. If they are not present, it might just be just come take the message, deliver the message, bring it back again to us. I will think about it. After all, they are not there personally, the Russia-Ukraine war. Well, it's clear that... Um, um, I don't want to be too definitive. The G20 summit is dead on arrival. And I, I don't dead on arrival? How? <laughs> because, because we have uh, Joe Biden there. Yeah, that, that's American the president, the who, man in the who world. Is, who, is, who is Joe Biden going to be talking to in, in this summit? <laughs> you know, I think look at the global divide. Um, you know, um, yeah. we are no more in a, in a unipolar world in, economically. True. It is not just US and every other person. Mm -mm. Mm. You have a, a China. You have a Russia, economically, militarily, they are up there. And then the issue about, uh, you know, climate, fi uh, climate Change. financing, mm. uh, you know, and even the fact that the Russian-Ukraine war is affecting global supply of wheat. The two, two, of the, two of the, among the top three largest suppliers of wheat in the world, exporters of wheat in the world, is Ukraine and China. The other is the U.S. They are the top three exporters of wheat in the world. Now, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine is affecting the global supply of wheat. In fact, it, 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 currently there's no deal as to align for export, mm. so we, we, which means that any attempt to export makes it a legitimate target. In fact, we have seen that both Russia and Ukraine have attacked their uh, you know, warehouses you know, for grains. Yes. You know, so, so it's a, it, you, when, you, when you look at because it is not a military union, the G20 is not. Yes, these are the most powerful countries in the world. Mm -hmm. But the G20 is specifically chosen as, as at the time it was formed, they were the 20 largest economies in the world. The 25th member, 21st member of the G20 is the European Union. Again, a monetary and economic union. You know, that is the 21st member of uh, the G20. So you see that more than, and 
you see, when you talk about national power, we're talking about uh, a personal interest. At this level, we're talking about national interest, not just personal interest of the leaders. At the level of national interest, it is you, look at, you talk about the national interest or the national power of a country. Mm. The key things you're looking at are, is military uh, might and the economic viability of the economy of, the, of that of that of that country's economy. Mm -hmm. So, if a China, the second largest economy in the world, is not there. The leader is not present. Russia and China combined are the only two countries who can really challenge the U.S. militarily. They are not there. What, what, who, who, is, who is the U.S.? In fact, in fact, you have even heard the American president complaining. He was disappointed. He, 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 he disappointed that he, 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 he wished that you know, the Chinese. But you know, this same U.S. has made efforts. They brought, invited the uh, uh, Indian prime, uh, premier. Uh, Narendra Modi, Modi yes. uh, you know, to the U.S. and gave him national honors, you know, trying to promote him uh, India. You know, India is ready to cover from China, the world's largest, world largest populated country in the world. Mm. And then when it comes to the South China Sea, it is the key rival to the U.S. So that the U.S. is promoting India, you know, uh, meeting, uh, and at the same time, you know, sending tantrums or dark tribes at China. At the same time, it is, you know, it is... Uh, in, in relations oh, right. with uh, India, India, we are okay. saying that uh, the U.S. Hmm. is in a fix in this meeting. If he knew, mm -hmm. I'm sure Biden would not have attended the meeting. If it, he knew that they were not going to come. come. He okay. said this summit, the 18th G20 summit, is dead on the runner because yeah. the heavy weights are yeah. not there. Yeah. And that brings to mind what happened in Taiwan, uh, a region where you have a show of strength, where Pelosi went ahead to provoke China when she went to visit Taiwan without telling China. And that seems to be also at the back of uh, the Chinese president's mind. It's like one slap too many from the U.S. And right now, it's like, you know, an avenue to retaliate by snobbing, so to speak, according to some ponderate, the G20 summit. Dead on arrival? No. Okay. This is because it is a summit. Hmm. And the summit has been organized by 20 largest economies of the world. Minus two. <laughs> Minus two. Don't forget that. The second world. largest is not there. Okay. Then okay. We, have, we have representative for Ro uh, mm. Russia mm. and we have representative mm. for China. Mm. Now, what is there there? Nothing is there because you still have Germany there. So, America, America is looking at a situation where they will continue to dominate. Mm. And so, if there is any country that, is, that does not seem to be down below there. They are worried. They want to, uh, let us pull up this country and let it then become part of us so that they can always carry our message. So when you say that it is dead on arrival, I just wonder uh, if the meeting should even be cancelled. Would that be or okay. that be okay? So you mean that term dead on arrival is too strong? Yeah, well, <laughs> it is a strong one. This is because uh, no one nation can hold the world to ransom. Somebody has said that before that. No one nation, not even America, can hold the world to ransom. Now China is not going to be there. Uh, Russia is not going to be there. They have said their reasons. Why is uh, USA President Joe Biden disappointed? He is disappointed because of the agenda that has been prepared. You see, when you, when you look at meetings, you will say, okay, what are the issues that affect us globally. What are the global issues? And the two key players issues? are not there. And so if these people are not there, uh -huh. yes. it is a setback. Uh -huh. Setback does not mean a dead, on arrival. dead on arrival. Okay. No, it's a setback because it's, it's going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. And the, the issues or the explanations that have been so given are tangible enough, are reasonable enough for them to be able to forge ahead to say, okay, now we move ahead. This is because uh, Russia is represented, China is represented, <laughs> and these are persons that you can actually say they are representing their countries. Because if not, they would have said, we do not have any representatives. And if they didn't bring any representative, what we are saying now, yes, we just be solid to say something is really happening. As it were, as it is now, because they are ably represented, we feel that the summit will go on and the resolutions at that uh, meeting 
will be all encompassing. All right. Now he said they are ably represented. And that's what is causing this discussion right now. Yes. Are they really ably represented? Knowing fully well that we are talking about precedents now being present. You see, just as I rightly argued before oh, now. And we're looking at love, love and lead. <clears throat> No. Representing these two, uh, come on, no. the, the, is the weight there? No, again, <laughs> ask yourself the question what is the position of those who are representing their country? Mm. What is their position? They are not just ordinary ministers, prime minister, prime minister, they're yeah, not as powerful yeah. as the no. president. No, no, you see, the question, foreign minister, they are both ministers. Yeah, let's say that, that. No, and no, about the president. No. You see, the yes. question is, you take for, for the fact that they are being represented, that mm. makes it mm. the fact that they are interested in what is going on there. And they are going to make their input. Those who are represented will not sit down as bench warmers. And why issues that mm. affect their nation is being discussed, they will not make a contribution. Mm. Before they left their country, their president must have, issues must have been addressed. Foreign uh, 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 the borders on politics, as it were, international politics, must have been addressed. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, those who are going to present it, they knew quite well what they are expected to say. They uh, knew well the, the contributions they have to make. That is why they... What if they expected to go beyond the scope of what they asked to say? What no, no, happens? No, uh, the issues... Uh, let us look at it here critically. Yes. The issues they are going to address all have been tabled down before now. Mm. To the knowledge of every nation that is being represented. Nobody is coming for, uh, with an issue, just like my brother here, Harali, said. They, they have an agenda, and the agendas has, well, have been sent to these nations as it were, and they have been discussed. All right. And then finally they are coming All to right. address it as it were. But if there are other issues that will come up hmm. that will require their own contribution as it were, they will equally make contribution from their own understanding. But okay. just as I argued, hmm. everything that borders on international politics but that's an issue of interest. Interest. That's okay. his message. Uh, don't forget that after every meeting you get to here outside the agenda, it will be any other business. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that yeah. is where this president really it's come out good. and drop the goals that they have with them to express their minds and opinion. Well, good point, great point. Oh, Kimichi. You heard them. We're still uh, dwelling on that word or that phrase, dead or not, right? because the heavy weights are not there. For what uh, Ruby talked about, and of course, uh, uh, a barrister here also said, look, they said it's not dead on arrival. It's a setback, but not dead on arrival, as opined by Ibrahim. What's well, your opinion? Um, I think the phrase dead on arrival will be like using a sledgehammer to hit, <laughs> a sledgehammer. To hit a fly. Yeah. Uh, but I think the resolution that will come out from the summit will be a weak one. Um, a weak one? Yes, a very weak resolution in comparison to if the, uh, the president of China and Russia is there to take a decision. Um, this is a clear protest from the two leaders. It shows that they are not, uh, they are not happy with uh, the decisions of the West or other G20 members. It also shows that, it's also symbolic because it shows that they are moving away truly or they, they are seeking a credible alternative to the G20, they are moving to the BRICS. And if you check the BRICS uh, countries, they have about $25 trillion uh, economy among the nations. And you have 40 countries indicating interest to join the BRICS. The BRICS so yeah. this is a clear testament that, like, look, we are not going to uh, be governed uh, uh, unequally by the old order. The old order is presented by Europe and America, where they have pure dominance through the petrodollar. If you can see, if you know, if you if you notice clearly, you see that the BRICS nation have their own bank. Yeah. To, to, that is the new development bank, also mm. called the BRICS Bank. The headquarters in Shanghai, they have in South Africa, regional and and Brazil also. So it's a clear testament that look, uh, the, the the issue of the financial system we have to renegotiate if we are to work together mm. uh, in the G20 uh, summit or in the G20 groups of nations. So Thank the BRICS you. is that credible alternative that they are championing. Thank and you. this is part of the protest that they are putting forward. All right. Thank you. Well, they said you saying dead on arrival is too strong. So look, we're playing softer world to qualify this beautiful <laughs> quality rap on this show. <laughs> but someone said that with the absence of these two leaders take it or leave it, the G20 has been weakened. Considerably. No, I, th I think what I said, I, was at, I don't want to be too definitive. Yes. But more or less, then I, the G20 summit is dead on arrival. I, think I don't want to be too definitive. Yeah. yeah I made that prefix. To say that, um, maybe for, lack, for lack of a, a more succinct uh, phrase, to, you know, to, to show that without the, the, the uh, uh, Chinese Premier, 
uh, Xi Jinping and the Russian president, uh, Vladimir Putin, in attendance, no effective decision can be taken on the core issues tabled for discussion at the, at the G20. And so if, if we don't have an effective decision, I think you use it a more appropriate phrase, it's going to mm. be weak. Weak. If you have a decision that is not, uh, that is not a decision, mm. I, I don't know what you can say the G20 uh, summit has achieved. That, that, that's all I, I think the, the, the point is... Uh, is Thank you. Thank you so, so much, gentlemen. Our time is up, but your points... For and against, strong, powerful, with good reasons. Look, since they have a representative, they are good to go. Why he said no, they're not as powerful as a president because every meeting you get to after the agenda, any other business. There may not be any other business for these two persons because they have to come directly from their own leader, which is a president. Well, Ukraine is there making that point. The world is there making that point. India, China, squabble over our border dispute. Don't forget also about the dominance of China in the South China Pacific. They are saying they own it, but others are saying no way it belongs to us. Let's share. Don't forget also Russia pummeling uh, uh, Ukraine seriously. Ukraine also is trying to fight back, saying leave our land. Okay, food security, energy security, you just name it. It's all about what is happening in the world. And that is what G20 really, really wanted to handle, really wanted to tackle with everyone coming together on board to discuss issue. But no Zeng Jinping, no Vladimir Putin. But there is... A Tinubu, our president. Yes, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, gentlemen. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on today's show. I appreciate the wonderful analysis. We'll do it again next week, Tuesday, God willing. Bye for now.